Hello and welcome. Today I'll be sharing my thoughts and feelings on an obscure artifact known as the Rohan Codex and will be attempting to decode it as nobody has since attempted to in at least a decade. Due to its obscurity, I had only a small handful of sites on the internet for reference, so I decided that I'd try to piece together my rendition of the Codex in its past. Before I begin, again, most of these statements and conclusions are based on personal views and theories, not facts or evidence. So if you'd like to draw your own conclusions from my opinions, just know that they aren't based in fact. One more thing, I am not an expert in coder ciphering. This was made solely to feel a passion for history and attempting to decode manuscripts. Also, if you'd like to tag onto any of my theories and guides, especially those regarding the notations, be sure to credit me. Otherwise, feel free to formulate your own opinions. Now that I've clarified everything, it is time to delve into the content. Part 1. The Introduction Originally discovered in Hungary, the Rohan Codex, named after the Hungarian city Rohan it was found in, has been one of the many mysteries in the world. This 448-page codex consists of an unknown scripture, of which still remains undeciphered since record of it first surfaced in 1743. The author of both the text and the drawings in the codex is unknown, as are the codex's origins, such as where it was written, why it was written, and when it was written. While these questions will most likely remain unanswered forever, there are details within the book that might help answer these questions. Aside from the many gaps encompassing the codex's history, what is understood is that based on the drawings, there seems to be a religious connection to it. According to one Wikipedia article on the subject, it is stated that Besides the text, there are 87 illustrations that include religious, laic, and military scenes. The crude illustrations seem to indicate an environment where Christian, pagan, and Muslim religions coexist, as the symbols of the cross, crescent, and sun or swastika are all present. What's more, there appears to be a Venetian watermark near the end of the codex, which dates back to the 1530s. More specifically, the estimated date based on the Venetian paper used through scientific tests is believed to be from 1529 to 1540 AD. No other information that can be said for certain has been found, so now I will proceed on to my own theories. Part 2. The Theories Most of these theories I've made are simply based on logic, as you'll find throughout this analysis. I will be touching upon four theories and will present some further evidence I have dug up on the subject. So without further ado, these are my theories on the Rohan Codex. The first theory I have is that the Rohan Codex is not a hoax. So a lot of people have reviewed the Codex and they say it's a hoax, which while that may be a possibility, there are some important things to remember. For one, it was originally stated by every known resource in the Rohan Codex that it first appeared in a Hungarian library catalog from 1743. Also, we know that the paper used was identified as real Venetian paper with an official Venetian watermark. Mind you, the price of the paper and profound amount of ink used to write and illustrate the Codex may have also come at a cost, but not a cheap one. However, this may not be true. But regardless of the price, the motives and effort of this author seem more ind indicative of why it couldn't have been a hoax from a logical stance. I mean, it wouldn't make logical sense for somebody to put so much time and effort into encoding, drawing, and writing a 448-page codex on specifically Venetian paper and get a Venetian watermark printed on it, all for it to be a random hoax by an unknown person. Okay, so the second theory I have is that the document was written no earlier than 1529 AD and no later than 1600 AD. Using logical reasoning, if we know that the document was written on paper dated from 1529 to 1540 AD, then it physically wouldn't have existed before that. Additionally, while I feel that it would make more sense to say the document was written no later than 1743 AD since anything after or on the discovery date would be impossible. It just wouldn't make sense in terms of human life for anybody to live for 200 years. That is why I am pushing the end date further back to 1600 AD. Yes, 
there is the possibility that someone started working on this and when they die, someone else picked up from where they left off. Or that regardless of who wrote it, perhaps the text itself was written decades or centuries prior to when the paper was produced. But here's what I have to say for that. For one, just thinking about this logically, what are the odds that two people have identical handwriting and know the same obscure scripture that they are using? Clearly this scripture isn't a known one. It is unique and one of a kind. Plus, the handwriting and overall appearance of the whole book points to being written by one author. Even the drawings match the peculiar quality of the text. I mean, second of all, why would somebody request a large batch of paper to be made, leave it to collect dust for a century or more, and then finally come back just to be like just to write a mysterious codex? It just doesn't add up. I mean, like, why waste so much time and for what? Okay, so my third theory is that it was written from somebody in either the Middle East or Europe. While nobody knows for sure where the Rohan Codex was written, using logical thinking, I was able to narrow the possible locations down to only two regions, the Middle East or Europe. The reason why I couldn't, or at least wouldn't, make sense to have been written elsewhere, such as Africa, South America, North America, Central America, East or South Asia, Oceania, or Antarctica, is because of the paper tests scientists performed. If we know the paper was created in Venice, Italy, then what reason would a random author have to write it somewhere else? Why go through the hassle of traveling to other places just to write a giant codex if you live in Italy? Now I know what you're thinking. What about the Middle East? That's not near Italy in any way. Well, while that may be true, both Europe and the Middle East uh, shared similar religious beliefs and values, but only in certain parts. Um, besides, if you can recall from the beginning, I mentioned the symbols included within the text, which range from Christian to pagan to Muslim, as well as other Asian symbols. My point here is that clearly, this person would have had to have known about other religions, which means it is possible or at least more likely for the author to have lived near to the Middle East, in the Middle East, or have traveled somewhere nearby. Okay, so my fourth theory is that the symbols aren't the only text you can find in the Codex. Since I wanted to send a separate portion of time focusing and analyzing the many symbols that appear in the Codex, I wanted to instead bring the attention here to a more intriguing discovery I've made. Initially, when I first read the book, I thought there had been notes edited in by the provider of the downloaded version, so I just kind of shrugged it off at the time. Now, I know that not to be the case. There is a strange second set of text that randomly appears above and below lines of symbols, and it is not a recent addition to the original copy. In fact, from the sources I read, provided by others analyzing the wrong codex, nobody else talked about them which struck me as odd. In any case, however, I knew I was onto something important. For more context, I first realized these notations were a part of the original codex because when I was downloading a shortened version of the Rohan Codex, I noticed the same series of notations in the same places. While it is extremely difficult to identify what these notes say because no matter where I view the codex, the quality provided blurs the words and accents too much, I tried my best and picked some of the most legible of the finds. So I typed the text into the detect language mode of three reliable translators and got a sleuth of results which didn't really seem consistent with one another. The one language that consistently came up was Hungarian, which wasn't really surprising, but it was just bizarre to me that an Italian man based on the Italian paper, the origins of course, wouldn't want to write in Italian. Then it came to me. Just because the paper had Italian versions doesn't mean whoever used the paper was Italian. Perhaps it was imported into Hungary and written on by a Hungarian man, not an Italian man. With that in mind, I decided to continue focusing on the Hungarian aspect of the text. Part 3. The Analysis So, for this part, I wanted to analyze the drawings that I found and sort of just theorize about what I think they signify. Okay, so the first drawing is found on 
page 26, um, it caught my attention because, honestly, it just straight up looks like a crucifixion. Um, also, I'm not religious, so I, I'm not really that knowledgeable in this area. Um, I don't know if it's supposed to be a significant religious event, you know. It's interesting because it appears again on page 51. Um, I also seem to see a crucifixion on page 148 and 153. So that's just something to take note of. I know that these are not the only drawings you can see in the text, but, um, I didn't want to spend too much time on this because, honestly, there's so many things that you could talk about. So next, I'm just going to move on to the symbols and what I've basically, quote-unquote, decoded so far. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show each marking that I've made and I'm going to also display the picture that I took from the website showing these notations that I mentioned earlier in my last theory. Um, and I'm going to show each Hungarian translation that I've come up with. So before I begin, um, let me just make it clear I'm not a professional. I'm not a certified uh, decipher or whatever you like to call that. Um, these are just my own renditions of the text and what I believe that they translate to. Um, another thing, I have been working on this and these are just a work in progress for now. Um, I will be releasing a part two. So these are just um, a an unfinished version of my complete analysis but I think it's interesting and important to share what I have so far so uh, I can kind of show how I've progressed along the way. So uh, my first observation, and I wrote this, as you can see in this screenshot, um, is that uh, from pages 31 to 49, there is a symbol uh, is shown in the drawing that I've written. It seems to appear above every page. And I will show you what I mean here. Um, whether its meaning is actually significant to every page, I don't know. But in the future, I'd like to touch more upon that because I believe it's pretty important if it appears above several pages and not just in any order, but right after each other. So I think that's an interesting observation to discuss. Okay, so I'm now going to go ahead and showcase each observation I've made. Um, so there's several pages well, I will be showing here. So basically on the left hand side you will see, well first of all at the top there will be the page number. Then you'll see to the left that I've drawn each symbol. And then to the right of each symbol you'll see my translations to a Hungarian combination of letters. They do not form actual words. These are not confirmed. And these are just works uh, of my own. They're work in progress. So at the moment, these are not official. But with that being said, here are what I've uh, uncovered. So first of all, we have page 111 and page 112 here. Um, feel free to pause the video if you'd like. Uh, I will be showing these quickly. So here to the left is 111 and to the right is 112 with red markings on the symbols I've identified. Uh, same thing as last time, but with pages 114 and 117. Okay, so here we've got 114 to the left, 117 with the same red markings. I've marked all the symbols. And then here we have page 121. So yeah, uh, here's page 121, the entire page, as red markings for the symbols. And then here we've got 132, 133, and 134. 
So here uh, to the left we have 132 and then to the right we have 133 both with red markings and then after that we have the whole page of 134. It's just one page with red markings. Next up we've got 135 and below that 136. So first of all, uh, we have here 135. And the right after that is the whole page of 136, complete with red markings, both of them. All right, so next up we have 137, and then after that, 138. So to my left is 137, to my right, 138. Both have markings, red, for the symbols. And um, here we have page 150 and page 151. Okay, so to the left is page 150 and to the right is page 151. Both have red markings. All right, so here we have page 152 and then below that 153. So uh, first we have page 152 complete with red markings. And then after that, we have page 153 with red markings as well, whole page. And then up next here, we have 156, 158, and below that, 159. So to my left is 156, to the right is 158, both have markings. And then after that, 159, the whole page, complete with red markings again. Finally, at the top here, we have the rest of 159, and then just below that, 161. All right, and here's the final image with 161. It's annotated. Okay, so this is officially the end of the video. Um, you guys have no idea how happy I am to be sharing this. This is taking me months, and I mean months, of research, of thinking, of effort and time, and this is only part one. So, um, if you like the video, like it. If you dislike, dislike it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I really appreciate you guys sticking around this long video. I'll see you in the next one. Stay awesome, my friends. Love you all. Goodbye.